Welcome back. He is the co-founder of Facebook, and now he's calling for the social media giant to be broken up. Chris Hughes, who helped Mark Zuckerberg transform Facebook from a Harvard dorm room project into a revolutionary business, he lays out in a really scathing New York Times opinion piece why he believes Facebook's reach and power is dangerous and should be stopped. Hughes reserves his toughest criticism for Zuckerberg himself, saying this in part, and it's a lengthy piece, he's saying this in part, Mark is a good, kind person, but I'm angry that his focus on growth led him to sacrifice security and civility for clicks. He goes on to say Mark's power is unprecedented and un-American. Now, Facebook is now pushing back to today. If spokesman saying this in a statement, I'll read for you. Facebook accepts that with success comes accountability, but you don't enforce accountability by calling for the breakup of a successful American company. Let's find out. Joining me right now is Facebook co-founder Chris Hughes. Chris, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. You, it is, it's a real exhaustive analysis of, and <laughs> you- not too exhaustive. No, 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 that's not what I meant. Um, that you've clearly, I was struck by, you clearly, this was a long time coming for you. You yeah. left Facebook in 2007, you cashed out in 2012. Why now? What compelled you to write this now? Well, I, I think like a lot of other Americans, I marveled at Facebook's growth and, like as you said, sold my shares in 2012. But then for several years following that was just so impressed by the direction of the company. Then in 2016, with the rise of Donald Trump and then following in international locations to um, a sense that the, the uh, platform might be leading to national provoking nationalist conversations, and then there was the Cambridge Analytica scandal, yeah. and now every month there seems like there's another scandal after another. And so I began to go on this journey of thinking about, I work on economic issues all day, and I uh, work on things that have to do with antitrust, and I said, well, how, how can this be stopped? And I came, and I have come to the conclusion that a competitive market is the way to hold Mark and Facebook accountable. Right now they are not accountable because they don't have competitors. They're not accountable to a board. The Mark controls 60% of the voting shares and they're not really that accountable to government yet. So I believe that the government should step in, make the market more competitive and also regulate it to protect users' privacy, to enable them to move to different platforms and set guidelines for speech. You you're right. I mean, you take on some of the tough questions that you're going to be faced with. You say that you take responsibility for not sounding the alarm sooner. You lay out kind of what the triggers were around the 2016 um, time period. Why is it for you that if you, if you knew that you have some responsibility that you didn't sound the alarm sooner, why didn't you? Well, I think that there's, there's this thing about Facebook that is a question that I think a lot of people grapple with. It's unclear, is Facebook just showing us the way we've always been? You know, where people always mm -hmm. screaming at each other about politics and now we can just see it when we log in? Or is Facebook actually, and social media in general, actually changing the way that we talk about our politics? And so for me, for a long time, I thought it was more of the former, that it was just like, people will be crazy yeah. uh, and people are often saying what they, what they believe. And over time, I've come to believe that Facebook is actually contributing to that. What I, what I know is that there are algorithms, yeah. rules essentially, that are programmed to, tell, to, to show certain things in newsfeed and other things. Now, I mean, I'm on the patent for newsfeed. Yeah. So it's a very complex thing, but those rules are set by humans. And so Mark himself has said that Facebook went uh, too far, wasn't secure enough in the 2016 election. He's taken responsibility for it. But the point is, is that one company and one person have this outsized power. I mean, 2.4 billion people on Facebook because Facebook owns Instagram and WhatsApp. And so there's no accountability there. So my own journey is waking up to this. And I had, you know, I've exchanged messages with Mark and talked with him as I talk about in the did piece in 2017. Did you give him a heads up that you're going to do this? I didn't. I didn't. I, um, I don't think it came as a surprise. I've been critical of a lot of the company's decisions over um, the past year, and he knows that. Someone asked me and this, so Chris. Someone asked me this. Um, you do reserve your toughest criticism for Mark. You say he's a good guy, he's a kind guy, but is this in any way a personal beef between the two of you? It's not a personal beef, but it is personal. I mean, I've been friends with Mark for 15 plus years. I don't know if we'll be friends on the other side of this peace, but I have no beef with him. I, I like Mark. I, I love his family. He's a good person. I also think he has too much power. And, and I should say that I, I think that ultimately it's up to government to solve this. You know, it's not like 
Mark Zuckerberg, ironically, this is the one problem that Mark Zuckerberg cannot solve. It's up to government to come in, break up the company, and set this baseline of standards. So um, I, I do feel a sense of, of anger, mm -hmm. as I say in the piece, that Facebook has become this. I feel a sense of personal responsibility about it. But uh, to me, the, the solution has to be government stepping up, not, not Mark per se. When you have the chance of, so Facebook's response. Um, they accept responsibility. Uh, they accept that with, uh, success comes accountability, but you don't enforce accountability by calling for the breakup of a successful American company. Do they have a point? Do you have to break it up? Is there something short of it that would be that would make sense to you? Well, probably unsurprisingly, I disagree. I think we have a long tradition in the United States of when companies get too big, too powerful, and become unaccountable. We say, hey. We like free markets. We like, them. we like markets when they're dynamic and fair, and we want competition, because competition does enforce accountability. If you don't like a burger that you get at one restaurant, okay. you've got 10 others down the street to choose from, and thus the free market works. That's how it's supposed to work, but at least. But when one company gets so big, there isn't really accountability, and I think that's, that's what needs to change. But before breaking it up, can you help it? I think that Facebook is trying hard to to right the ship, but I think that we shouldn't need to just trust the private sector to do the right thing. I mean, we don't do that with airlines. Sure. We don't do that with pharmaceutical companies. We don't do that with the financial industry. We don't do that with healthcare. We say we want competition. We understand that, that dynamic markets are a good thing, but we want to also ensure that, there, that there's a, a baseline level of protection and the fact that we haven't gotten there with digital companies I think is just a testament to how quickly not just Facebook but Google, Amazon, Apple, all of them have uh, have grown. I haven't even thought of this until now. Do you think that Facebook can can change? This Facebook can be fixed with Mark Zuckerberg still at the helm? You don't address it in your piece. Do you think Mark needs to go? Yeah, I mean some people have asked me that exact question, should he resign? I think that well he said that more or less, I created this mess, I'm, I'm going to fix it. But I think it's, we also need to take a step back and understand, let's say he did step down. He still owns 60% of the voting shares, mm -hmm. so he would hire his replacement, effectively. So uh, I don't know what would be much better about having Mark as a, as a chairman with a puppeteer in okay. as the CEO. I don't think, again, I, I, don't, I think we, we always go to how can the private sector solve this? How can Facebook just clean up its act? And I think it's government that has to step in and be the solution here.